Yi Yi, by Taiwanese director Edward Yang, is filled with glass. The film is riddled with shots that playfully combine light and reflections to visually arresting effect. We're reminded of this motif at every turn, whether it's seeing characters in a mirror, seeing characters look through windows or panes, seeing our characters through windshields, or seeing characters from the outside looking into a shop or building. But what does this motif achieve other than aesthetics? In some instances, the motif arrives when we are supposed to feel a sort of melancholy solitude. There's a distance felt between us and the characters. We feel like outsiders, unable to enter their world. It reinforces how some characters truly feel alone. Even we, the viewer, aren't given the chance to empathize with a close-up or even a clear look at the characters' facial expressions. Sometimes this motif moves beyond solitude and embodies an important separation and potentially desolation. Throughout the film, the motif of glass represents separation in several forms, whether it's a loss of control over a loved one's fate, or a viewer's separation in understanding and conflict in the diegesis, or even as a physical barrier, an object in the way of a character's goal. This last form stands as an impactful way to reinforce separation. Our characters can see their goal, their desire, yet there is still something perhaps unseen in their way. In this shot, Adi has just had a baby and films from the other side of the glass wall. In the next scene, Adi's unforeseen barrier to a happy life with his new baby is realized when his former partner makes an appearance at the party. Everyone knows that she wanted to marry Adi, so her appearance confuses and angers his wife. Adi's wife, paranoid and upset, then lashes out and berates Adi's former partner and devolves the party into a hectic argument. Ouch. The motif of reflection additionally presents an opportunity to bend the conception of space in the diegesis. Reflections allow for another avenue of storytelling, another lens. We see characters enter reflections before they physically enter the frame. In this shot, we see not only inside NJ's office, but his secretary's desk too. The two images feel blurred over one another, and we get an idea of the entire space packed into one frame. Sometimes reflections allow us to see both the inside of a place and the environment it's in. A common theme in image is urban living, such as concrete high-rises and apartment buildings, or lit up office cubicles and bustling highways. Most importantly, through reflections, we're opened up to a second narrative or a second emotion. In this shot, the playful drunk wedding guests compliment Adi's happy-go-lucky attitude while he's talking to his brother-in-law, NJ. It makes NJ feel alone in his seriousness. As the film goes on, reflections represent moments of contemplation and realization. Moments of unspoken clarity play out in extended long takes, where we sit and attempt to understand the character's own psyche. This may not be as much as reflective, but perhaps refractive. Refraction, as opposed to reflection, indicates a change in direction, or in this case, tone and emotion. The image we see appears as a true reflection, but diegetically, it's slightly skewed by a character's inner feelings and realizations. The glare of characters, their silence, leaves the space for us to fill in the blanks. It's a minimalist choice, yet it utters so true and real to how we as people make difficult decisions. In silence, we think. We see this when Min Min, whose mother is in a coma, breaks down over her mother's condition. As she looks over the vast cityscape in solitude, we don't need dialogue to feel what she's feeling. We can feel her contemplation, her change in attitude, and ultimately when she makes a decision. Nancy all played out in one take. Her decision? She leaves her family to a Buddhist retreat in search of solace. The motifs of reflection elevate the diegesis in a multitude of ways, namely aesthetically. But is it possible that reflection also exists beyond the film's aesthetics? When we look at the film's narrative, we see different characters as blatant reflections of each other. 
elements of nostalgia play into this theme and are made evident through scenes like this, combining parallel editing and NJ's voiceover. <laughs> Pay attention to NJ's dialogue. Now, that same dialogue juxtaposed with the scene that preceded it. The motif of reflection creeps through its aesthetic boundaries to influence the narrative itself. But even that, too, is subject to change and isn't always the true image. Reflection. Refraction. <laughs>